sort of topic is, is running. Now those legs, those pins, have covered a huge amount of distance over the years. Um, do you still do plenty of Ks with running? Uh, I, I never really loved running. Yeah. Um, <laughs> early on in my career, it was we did a lot of it. Uh, 1Ks, 100s, 61K time trials, we did it all. And then towards the end, we really started, guys would really start running specific to their position. So obviously being a, uh, a key defender, a lot of my stuff was short distance, repeat effort. So even when we came back from holidays, excuse me, the midfielders would do a 2.2K time trial and I would do 11 200s. So they'd give you a time like six minutes 30, whatever it was, and then you'd equate to you need to run 35 seconds 200s. And so they were on the minute. So it was probably worse, but yeah. So a lot of my conditioning has been about that, like shorter stuff. Um, so I don't really go for a lot of long distance runs, yep. but I do enjoy shorter stuff. Um, you know, the whole deload XL stuff, which is really puts you under leg fatigue. Yep. Um, it's probably my goal is to, um, now that I'm living here, I'd love to, to run the city to surf. Yep. Um, because yeah, long distance is not, is not my, uh, is not my pet event, yeah, right. but, um, you know, it's all about challenging yourself and doing it's, something different. People will be like, oh, come on, you used to run 13, 14 Ks total in a game, but yeah, just running, what, see this says 14 Ks. 14 K. Just 14 K nonstop. Yeah. It's, so. it's a little bit different, isn't it? When you th sit there, you've got to put the earphones in and go. It's very different to playing a game of footy where you've got different dynamic. Exactly right. Things yeah. happening. Exactly. All that, that, that 14 K I'm thinking about is each K, whereas when you're playing, there's, there's a lot of things going yeah. on. Did, did you ever get any running based injuries from that, say shin splints or plantar fasciitis? So we were pretty lucky because again, your training was not so heavy load that it was constant running. Oh, I think your, your feet take a real wear and tear um, in, uh, in pre seasons, it's just like hard grounds. You're trying to manage getting that all that load in, you know, because you've got to really tune yourself up for the start of the season, but also. Um, trying to look after your feet. Is, are you wearing boots versus runners? You know, and you want to do drills nice and hard, but you don't want to be in boots all the time. So your yeah. feet take a pounding. So you know, there's times where I had arch. I've got pretty. Um, I don't have very good flexion in my big toes, so yeah. my arch takes a lot of load. So um, yeah, there's been times I've had to manage that, and um, I think what I learned was at the start of my career, I was like, well, oh, and I'm. I was one of those guys that just tried to power through everything yep. and you know like oh I can fix it myself and then especially when I got to Hawthorne they were like you know we'd prefer you to tell us that you're a little bit sore and miss one session yep. opposed to just trying to charge through be a hero and yeah. miss two weeks so um, at the back end well, yeah in the last eight years I really uh, worked out on how to manage my body and stuff like that and in the long run you keep yourself on the park for longer. That's it. And so it's what we tell all our uh, members here and anyone that I see is that you have to understand your body. You know, you have to learn how to feel it. So I suppose that's what you're saying there is that you actually learn what your body's telling you and then let yeah. someone know about it. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and we that's what we teach the young guys. You know, there's a difference between right. stiffness and soreness. Yeah. It's like, yeah, your body's, yeah, your body's a little bit fatigued because you've just up your training load yeah. and you're not used to it and that's you know like you're stiff but then there's also like no you're legitimately sore in a hamstring because you yeah. you know so you've got to you've got to understand the difference and respect it yeah that's a good point very good point and and coming into upping training loads um around nutrition um you know as a pro obviously nutrition is one of the key main factors um, how about now? What sort of things do you do, you know, with your diet or nutrition to, to keep you recovering or to keep you performing? It's still your best now. Yeah, it's. Um, I've never been a huge supplements guy. Yeah. Um, you know, I, t I take protein powders uh, definitely after I train. Um, I like to I like to mix it up um, in terms of dieting. Like sometimes I've I've tried a few different things yeah. over, as you can imagine, over my journey. I've I've tried some things. Um, it's funny, I really enjoyed doing like, I was on a really strong keto style yep. diet, but um, it's not great for your body and it's yep. not sustainable. Um, but now like, yeah, I, I feel like you really need to to refuel after yep. session, especially because yep. I'm going morning and night. So okay. um, yeah, I like to mix it up, a bit of intimate fasting. So yep. I, like to, I like to train in the morning, empty stomach, and really fuel up hard after that. Okay. Just get in good carbs. Yep. Um, 
You know, I think everyone tries to stay away from carbohydrates, yeah. but it's not having a true understanding about them um, yeah. and how they can, we, how you need them for refueling. Yeah. Um, and then I just little things like I try to eat my dinners pretty early. Yeah. Um, not go to bed on a full stomach, and they're the things that work for me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think that's an area where people should really sit down. Like yeah. I was lucky I had a dietitian at the club, so you yeah. learn the ins and outs, what to be cooking with, all those type of yeah. things. But for all the hard work you do in the gym, you can ruin it so quickly yeah. by just having a poor diet. Yeah, that's, it's exactly right. And, and even with, say, splurging out on the weekend, that sort of stuff's okay. You, know, you can still have a drink, have something to eat. And... Yeah, look, I, I, I have Sunday fun day. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty disciplined dur during the week, but, you know, I'm... I, I watch the football on Sundays yeah. to prepare for work and man, I'll sit around, have some lollies, have yeah. some chips, you know, like if friends want to have a beer or whatever, um, you've got to do everything in moderation um, and, you know, you can't you can't just try and be 100% dialed up the yeah. whole time because it's, uh, it's not sustainable. No, exactly right. So it's a good lesson to everyone, isn't it? That you, you do have to enjoy yourself, but you just need that that balance. Yeah. So if I'm going to have some beers during the week, so yeah. now I've got to train harder. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> what I was going to The next point is then how do you go in and get ready for training after a, you know, a little bit of a bigger session on the way, or not even a bigger session, but a couple of beers? Does that affect you come Monday and the way you prepare or? Uh, I, f I find like if I'm going to have a drink on the weekend that I need to be active. Yeah. That's, that's, even if you're not, even if you're not drinking or whatever it is, I find if I just sit around the whole weekend, Monday morning training's very hard. You know yep. what I mean? Your body just goes into this state of relaxation. So whether you're having a beer or you're not having a beer, I think it's just being active and moving. And, and for me, like I said, it's, it's getting up, walking the dog, yeah. things like that which allow me to then back up the next day. But yeah, yeah I've, if you're going to have a beer and then you just lie on the couch for an hour and watch Netflix, Monday morning's going to be you're a brutal You're struggling session. to get into training, aren't you? <laughs>